Do you know why trans women go as she, her? Because if they went by her, she, there'd be chocolate. That's right, welcome back to the bit of truth for a Saturday. Let's just hope those alphabet people haven't ruined it for you yet. Now, speaking of people who are a little bit light on their feet, we've got Suella Deville that's come out and said illegal migrants are pretending to be gay. And Alton John is not happy. Yes, she's claimed that the Dover discoverers are pretending to be those of the alphabet persuasion in order to get special treatment. This is not long after Alton John accused her of legitimizing hate for their community. Well, what do you expect? Official data has shown that nearly three quarters of decisions relating to those who claim protection based on their preference are granted asylum in the UK. Yes, who would have thought that those people who say they're kids with beards and tattoos or are afraid of water yet cross the channel in a rubber dinghy then relax at the pool in the spa hotels are in fact playing the system. Alton, please shut up. Have you ever met a Dover Discoverer? No, didn't think so. If you think that Suella is bullshitting you, then you can take all of the ones that identify as being in the community. I'm sure you've got enough bedrooms for it. Hey, I'm sure you've even got a big enough mattress. Stay out of politics and leave it to our already dunce decision makers. You gotta learn today. Now, in other Dover Discoverer news, the Strady Park Hotel in Khnefli. I have no idea how to say that. Khnefli. Anyway, it faces further delays in housing asylum seekers. Yes, local residents are doing their best to save their community by constant protests at the four-star luxury spa hotel. Plans were revealed back in May to house a number of them, causing alarm and concern for the local community. But they weren't having any of it. Protests began, but ultimately ended in failure, as the hotel owners the Home Office and the agents working on their behalf were allowed to press ahead with the proposal. Yes, who cares about the now closed hotel and the hundred jobs that were lost with some of the staff actually working at the hotel for over a decade who were heartbroken not just to leave behind a job but a family that they created over many years. Well, even since they've kept up their refusals and protests continue with a constant presence to vent their disgust. Talk of when the people will actually arrive is constantly being pushed back. Some saying before Christmas, some saying after Christmas. Well, at this rate, I think the world will end before the locals let it happen. Apocalypse is not. Now, speaking of the apocalypse, climate change is apparently making us party like the world is ending. Yes, apparently as the earth warms up, people are turning to more booze and narcocos. Researchers have found that the number of alcohol-related and substance-related hospital visits has increased as a result of hotter temperatures and climate change. Well, I'm going to page Dr. Fucking Obvious on this one. Yes, well done. The sun makes people come out of their caves and then want to party. What a surprise, what a revelation. It's got nothing to do with climate change. Jesus. Confirmation bias could help me link driving at night with eating cheese on a Saturday after 4 p.m. In the summer, people drink, they go out, they have fun. They enjoy the three days of sunshine we actually get in a British summer weekend. And then what comes with alcohol? Or what doesn't come with alcohol? Water. Yes, leading to dehydration. Fuck me, I am no scientist, but I can state the obvious. Fucking useless sack of shit. Now, speaking of the Climacon and the end of the world, six young people take 32 countries to court over climate change. Ugh, what the f Yes, six people aged 11 to 24, including three siblings, have filed a lawsuit against 32 governments, including all EU member states. They are accusing the countries of insufficient action against climate change and failing to reduce their greenhouse gas emissions enough to hit the Paris Agreement target. They claim that their fundamental human rights, including the right to life, right to privacy, right to family life, and to be free from discrimination are being violated due to the government's reluctance to fight climate change. They've jumped on the bandwagon of eco-anxiety, forcing them to spend all their time indoors, also restricting their ability to sleep, 
to concentrate, or even to exercise? Well, you six little muppets, grow a set. Are you related to that Greta Twitface or something? What little molly coddled morons you must be. You all need treatment from a doctor. I'm going to swiftly move on now, because if I carry the rant in the way that I'd like it to be, I think I'd be getting a telling off from the YouTube gods. Yes, that's correct, that's correct. Right, now speaking of doctors and our lovely healthcare system, our health minister says that A&E is full of pensioners that don't need to be there. Breathe. Yes, hopeless Helen Watley arrived at a conference of NHS bosses on Wednesday. Bloody hell, they're not on strike, what a surprise. Anyway, she arrived on crutches. She said that her recent experience in hospital has motivated her to push for more change. She said, One of the things I've seen is how hard it is for emergency departments with so many frail elderly patients. Are you taking the fucking piss? Are you that clueless, heartless and out of touch? You realise that our heroic silver tops can't get an NHS appointment to see their doctor because they're all on fucking strike. And they're actually afraid that they won't make it 146 Wednesdays from now to be seen. All while Dover discoverers and people in prison are getting same day appointments. I am fucking fuming. Again, I'm gonna have to move on now because I'm gonna say something I can't even edit out. Breathe again. In other news of our no health service, let's take a look and see another cause of why it's got a severe lack of funds. The NHS unveils its first ever national uniform of 27 different coloured scrubs. What is this? One for every bloody gender? Yes, apparently bosses think it could. Notice the word could again. Anyway, it could save taxpayers millions if all hospital trusts sign up for the scheme and buy it through one supplier for an estimated £23 million a year. So you mean a monopoly? Oh yes, very clever. Don't allow for any competition. Let's just piss more money up the wall by dealing with someone the bosses are probably in bed with. Not like we haven't seen that before. Ask the government. Anyway, apparently patients and visitors will now be able to more easily identify staff in the overwhelming hospital settings in 27 different colours. I vote that we all put them in red and white stripes. You know, like where's Wally? As you can never fucking find one of them as they're always out of the picket line. Correct the mundo. Moving on, let's have a look at some crime. Dozens of armed police swarm Bradford city centre to tackle a mass brawl of teens in balaclavas. Yes, yeah, just another day in our lawless land. Today featuring the youths in hoodies and masks in Bradford. There was a brawl outside the magistrate's court, which led to huge crowds clashing with the police throughout the city. Even armed police couldn't get it under control as barely anyone was arrested. A 16 year old with a knife and five other youngsters, including three 16 year old girls, a 17 year old boy and an 18 year old man for assaulting emergency workers and criminal damage. The city councillor, Nazam Mazam, sounds like a magic spell, doesn't it? Alakazam! Anyway, he insists that Bradford is safe and the city is open for business and also says that the youths at court will feel the full wrath of the law. Well, again, let's play my favourite song. Well, I'll believe it when I see it, but I haven't seen it yet. Now, in other cities that are completely done for, let's have a look at Glasgow. The UK's first ever narcoco consumption room has been approved despite warnings from US officials that said not to make the same mistake that they did. Yes, local addicts can now legally get their fix at Glasgow's new £2.3 million health centre. Well done, Scotland. Your leaders have somewhere to go now before making decisions on your lives. Look at this place. Wow, fantastic. Come in, do your business, exit through the gift shop, and then back out into the general public to do what you like. I wonder how many cars with tinted windows and hooded wholesalers will now flock to the area to make sure that you have everything you need to enjoy your stay. I really am sorry for the local businesses, the local people and especially the local kids who are going to have to see this on a daily basis. You don't care what happens to us, face it, nobody does. Now speaking of Narcocos and foreign lands, a married British Airway pilot snorted Quiche Lorraine off a topless woman then tried to fly a packed holiday plane back to the UK. Yes, First Officer Mr. Pilot was about to fly from South Africa back to the UK 
When a worried stewardess raised the alarm after he admitted that he'd been a very naughty boy. Well, shocked bosses had no choice than to cancel the 12 hour long flight, costing the airline an estimated £100,000. The dad of one was suspended and then flown back home to the UK the next day as a passenger before then being tested at Heathrow Airport. Result, sacked and banned from flying. Let's hope this progresses further and the police get off their asses to take a deeper look into this matter. He's taken getting high to a whole new level. You're flying! Right, so what have we learned today? Alton John needs to shut up unless he's singing. Some people are suing over climate change. Some people are parting over climate change. The NHS is completely screwed in 27 new colours. And if you're a pensioner, don't you dare visit the hospital. Signing out.